Before this video begins, I would like to give a quick thank you to my Asbantium level patrons, Fallon Cortez and Nathan Gibson. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Hello everybody and welcome back to another Doctor Who lore video. As you know I've been going through every modern episode and I've been picking out one or two things to make a video about. This time I want to talk about Harriet Jones, who we first meet in the Slitheen two-parter and later on in two other episodes. Doctor Who has a bunch of fictional Prime Ministers, but Harriet Jones is probably the most interesting with expanded media fleshing out her time in office and what happened to her after she was forced out, including a completely different semi-official fate. So, beware spoilers for the following stories and without any further ado, this is the story of Harriet Jones. And yes, I know who she is. So what do we know about Harriet Jones? Well, according to our ID, she was born on the 3rd of June 1949 and she represented the constituency of Flydale North. We don't know when she became a Labour MP, but she seemed to have been one for a while by the time we meet her in Aliens of London, because she describes herself as being a lifelong backbencher. Now, a backbencher is basically a member of parliament who isn't a minister, they don't hold an official position in their party. Think of them as being, you know, the majority of MPs who aren't up there with the big names. They're quietly doing their own local things for the people they represent. In Harriet's case, her big policy was the idea of cottage hospitals, with her working out a system for these smaller more rural hospitals to not be excluded from centres of excellence, which are basically specialist clinics you tend to only really get in more urban and affluent areas. She was due to meet the Prime Minister about this policy on the day of the Slitheen's fake spaceship crash, but unknown to her, he'd been killed and stuffed into a cupboard. It's never outright confirmed in the episode, but this is intended to be then real life Prime Minister Tony Blair, you know, the famous war criminal. There are a couple of references to him in the episode and his body was meant to be a Blair lookalike, so I think it's safe to say that this dead PM is Blair himself. One of the references to Blair in the episode is a mention of the so-called Blair Babes, which was the kind of sexist media term used to refer to the 101 female Labour MPs elected alongside Blair in 1997. Harriet Jones specifically mentions that she's not one of these MPs, implying she'd been elected a while before then. However, she would be propelled to the public eye by simply being in the right place at the right time. Indeed, she happened to be in 10 Downing Street on the day the Slitheen enacted their plan to destroy the Earth, meeting the Doctor and Rose and helping them fight back against the monsters. When the dust settled after the destruction of Downing Street, Harriet Jones became an iconic image as she strode towards the nearby cameras. She was a heroic survival with words of reassurance and pride, giving her huge public support and setting her up for a massively successful time as Prime Minister, the architect of Britain's golden age and having an unprecedented three successive terms in office. However, as as we know, this wouldn't actually come to pass. According to the book, The Secret Lives of Monsters, in the immediate aftermath of Downing Street's destruction, acting Prime Minister Harriet Jones set up an official inquiry, which detailed the lengths to which certain factions within the previous government and the security forces would go in order to cover up their own mistakes. This so-called Jones Report exposed the truth of the space pig as being a hoax, successfully covering up the true events, although there were obviously many conspiracy theorists who didn't believe this disinformation. There are conflicting accounts on what the government blamed on the building's destruction, with the Secret Lives of Monsters suggesting that it was a gas leak and the unit website claiming it was a terrorist attack. On the 26th of May, Acting Prime Minister Harriet Jones released a press statement paying tribute to the dead unit staff, praising the organisation for their bravery and expertise. To quote her, I feel some deep sorrow and shame that this deception was carried out in the name of our nation and our government. However, some members of unit weren't particularly fond or gracious of Jones, specifically Major Jenny Maguire. On the unit website operations board, she wrote, Oh, in the acting PM, some women I've never heard of with my mother's hairdo. She was also dismissive of Harriet's admiration for the doctor, claiming that they all go through that starry-eyed phase. Although she still went to meet with a new Prime Minister at the acting office in Westminster, because obviously there wasn't a Downing Street anymore. So, you know, a big part of Harriet's time in office was rebuilding Big Ben and Downing Street. According to the Christmas Invasion novelization, Harriet's first week as Prime Minister was a blur of photo calls and official cars and new information, and the first time she had descended into the unit facility. The Secret Lives of Monsters has a newspaper article about the new Prime Minister written by Vivian Rook, comparing her to the famously controversial first female British PM, Margaret Thatcher. Jones was obviously not fond of these comparisons, pointing out how it was unhelpful and a bit sexist because, you know, they were both women and that was the only reason they were being compared. Although she conceded that there were actual similarities, saying, I think you could say that we both are immensely proud of the people of our great nation and the people of our planet, that we would place unwavering trust in the human race. Reading that, I guess Doctor Who Thatcher was a little bit different to our own. Thatcher? <laughs> 
When the Guinevere 1 probe was reported missing by UNIT, Major Richard Blake was a bit dismissive when talking about Harriet Jones. He speculated that she would use it as an excuse to visit UNIT's Tower of London base, and when she arrived, he wrote a memo telling other UNIT staff to be respectful towards her, but also to not let her think she owns the place. However, the novelization reveals that Harriet had always liked Major Blake, because, and I quote, he had been so gracious, not condescending, like many of the civil servants she had met, or patronizing like the military generals who assumed she wouldn't have a clue what she was talking about. So, she was very shocked and upset when Major Blake was killed by the Sycorax. In terms of Harriet's family, we don't know anything about her parents apart from her mother still being alive during the Slothene Crisis, but the Christmas Invasion novelization also mentions her granddad, who spent a few years in Venezuela trying to buy a gold mine and losing every penny. Harriet claimed he told her all sorts of stories about the rebel factions coming down from the mountains and raiding the townships, so he always knew when a raid was being planned, information Harriet was able to draw upon during the Sycorax incident. Indeed, the Christmas Invasion takes place within Joseph's first or second year as Prime Minister, depending on which day method you use, because things can be quite messy in the Doctor universe. When the Guinevere 1 probe went missing, Jones was busy implementing new policies. At some point before the episode, she had introduced financial reforms so that people including Jackie Tyler were £18 a week better off. According to the novelization, she was also going to solidify her cottage hospital scheme on January 1st of the following year, resulting in better healthcare for all. However, these plans were cut short when the Guinevere probe was hijacked by the villainous Sycorax, who began their invasion of the planet Earth on Christmas Day. During this incident, Harriet fell out of her death, with the novelization explaining that she was worried about having to protect every child across the UK. Her inner monologue specifically stating, this was worse than her first Prime Minister's questions. Hey, at least she didn't have to do a Paxman on Newsnight. You don't deserve to live. The Sycorax invasion was a very complicated political situation for Jones to navigate. She probably would have been killed or forced to surrender if the Doctor hadn't stepped in. As we see in the episode, she was relying on him to help them, but his absence made her more critical of him, proving Major Maguire right to call her admiration a starry-eyed phase. One of Harriet's key policies was national defence, something we see as she commands Torchwood to destroy the fleeting Sycorax ship, which puts her at odds with the Doctor. The novelization explains her reasoning for this, showing she was very reluctant to do it, but, and again, I I quote, she was Prime Minister, she had a duty of care, a responsibility that went well beyond her own wishes. She did what she did to protect her people, especially because she saw how the Sycorax leader had gone against his word to yield, so she was convinced Earth wouldn't be safe by letting the invaders leave in peace. However, this compelled the Doctor to depose her by calling her health into question. Indeed, the Time Traveler's Almanac states that after Alex Klein's unit debrief, a media and political storm had forced Jones from office. According to the Daily Telegraph in Love and Monsters, Harold Saxon was gaining popularity in March after unveiling the Archangel Network at the start of the year, which was now earning him 61% support in opinion polls. An unpopular Prime Minister was forced to announce that the government's new Defence Minister would be Harold Saxon, although it's unclear if this was referring to Harriet or a successor we don't know about. After her downfall, former Prime Minister Harriet Jones retired to an old house in the country and devoted herself to finding ways to protect the planet from alien aggressors. She took a reduced political role and made very few public appearances, but The Secret Lives of Monsters shows that she wrote an opinion piece in the Daily News after the Ratnos invasion, praising Minister of Defence Harold Saxon on his actions to destroy the spaceship. She thanked his courage and judgement for saving the Earth, especially because it justified her belief that the planet needed to look after itself in the absence of the Doctor. However, when the independent candidate Saxon and won the election with a landslide majority, Vivian Rook once again interviewed Jones, who was now less optimistic about the new Prime Minister. This interview reveals that Harriet was rested and relaxed without the strain of being a world leader. She said the following about being removed from office. It was a bit of a surprise. After all, I had just helped save the world from an alien invasion. But then again, much the same thing happened to Churchill. Indeed, rather famously, despite navigating the UK through World War II and becoming a significantly popular wartime leader, Winston Churchill lost his position as Prime Minister when the Conservatives lost the 1945 general election. However, Jones was still an MP, returning to the backbenches, although she only gave occasional speeches in the House. Her goal was once again the Cottage Hospital Scheme, something boosted by the public's distrust of hospitals like Royal Hope after it was taken to the moon. She wanted healthcare centres to be small, good and friendly, specifically mentioning Ledworth as an example. This article also reveals that Harriet's party itself didn't last very long after she left, and she was pretty paranoid about Saxon because, while she conceded that he was a charming man and he seemed to be what the country needed on paper, she she had done some digging, claiming, there are more questions about Harold Saxon than there are answers. And obviously she would be vindicated when Saxon turned out to be the master, killed the US president and tried to take over the universe with a bunch of future human killing machines. But to be honest, he's still probably not one of the UK's worst prime ministers though.
In the years after losing her position as Prime Minister, Jones worked with the Mr. Copper Foundation to develop the Subwave Network, a system which could intuitively seek out the Doctor's allies in the event of his absence during a major alien incident. She was forced to use this network when the Daleks moved Earth into the Medusa Cascade and began to invade the planet. Jones contacted Sarah Jane Smith, Martha Jones and Torchwood 3 so they could all work together to contact the 10th Doctor. This once again validated Jones's doubts of his reliability, with her stating that she still stood by her actions against the sick Thanks to the Subwave Network, the so-called Children of Time were able to reach the Doctor and help him make it to Earth, where he ultimately stopped the invasion. However, in sending the message, Harry exposed her own location and was seemingly killed by the Daleks in a defiant act of self-sacrifice, once again putting the people of her country first. And this was originally where her story ended. You see, showrunner Rossi Davis had debated using a different character to be behind the Subwave Network, including Elton Pope, Polly Wright, or Tegan Javanka. However, he chose Harriet as a favour to Phil Collinson, the producer of the show, whose favourite character was Harriet Jones. Despite this favour, Davis killed the character off, which, you know, caused Collinson to playfully nag his friends in the years after. Therefore, when Davis worked on the book Now We Are 600, he changed the fate of Harriet so that she escaped through a trapdoor and fled on a motorbike into the heady carrier of Miss Fitzpatrick's collection, a cabal of billionaires, which somehow played into the grand plans of the trickster. Davis considers this outcome official, claiming, She's my character, that's my episode, I say that's true. So I guess if you want to count Jack Harkness being the face of Bo, you have to count Harriet Jones magically escaping the Daleks, which kind of ruins the point of the scene. But you know, can't have one without the other. So, everyone that roasted me for not accepting the face of Bo stuff, now you have to accept this too. So, that's the rollercoaster tale of Harriet Jones, whose autobiography was banned by an act of parliament. In terms of alternate timelines, she was the leader of the opposition in a parallel universe Rose Tyler visited on her travels through dimensions, along with never having become PM in another dimension. In the Pete's World parallel universe, Harriet Jones became president and ushered in a golden age, although we don't know anything further. The Harriet Jones of the main universe is such a fascinating character who shows the nuances of being a significant person in the Doctor Who universe. She had to prioritise the safety of her people, which explains her actions in The Christmas Invasion. I really like how Expanded Media has been able to elaborate on her thought process during this moment, along with giving us indications of what her life was like during and after her time as Prime Minister. After all, she had a lot of alien stuff to deal with, being propelled into the role of Prime Minister off vibes alone, despite being a lowly backbencher for almost all her political career. She's a fascinating example of how time in Doctor Who is in flux and can change so dramatically based on one single event. What would Britain's Golden Age have looked like? Well, we'll never know. And on that note, that's it for this deep dive into Harriet Jones. I hope you enjoyed this video, or at least learned something new, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. And a special thank you to my Asbantium level patrons, Fallon Cortez and Nathan Gibson, my Diamond level patron, Glenna Clark, my Platinum level patrons, Maximilian Foreman and Nick's Games, and all my Gold level patrons, Boots, Daniel Shiletto, Discretio, Franz Horn aka Line Vortex, Robert Hock, Scarlet Hayes, and Thomas Zarp. Thank you so much for your support.